Hey guys, I want to share something with you from my book, Heart of the Father. This is just a quick uh, excerpt from it, and it's in chapter four, and I titled chapter four, Love Grown Cold, and it basically comes out of Matthew where Jesus is saying, kind of in the end, uh, sin will abound, and because of that, the love of many will grow cold. And basically what this book is about real quick is it's an image that I had that flashed across my mind that, that I feel like is a word for the church uh, in this season that we're in, this time frame that we're in. And the image was uh, Jesus was sitting at this table, uh, much like the Last Supper image, and around the table were all these other believers, people who had put their faith and trust in Jesus. And then at the bottom of this image was this very chaotic scene. There was chaos, sexual immorality, uh, rage, anger, protest, all those kind of things. And Jesus was longingly, he was lovingly looking out at this chaotic scene with the tears streaming down his eye. He had, he loved each one of those and desired an intimate relationship with them. But the believers at the table didn't share the same uh, emotion for this chaotic scene. And what I wanted to share in this video is um, to the furthest right of Jesus was a believer. He was standing up and he was just angry. He was so mad. He was yelling out at this chaotic scene and he was just with rage telling this chaotic scene just how chaotic they really were. His love had grown cold. And I want to read you two two things that I started this chapter off with. It's a couple of quotes. One by is, is by Og Mandino and the other by Billy Graham. Og Mandino said, Muscle can split a shield and even destroy life, but only the unseen power of love can open the hearts of men. Man, that's powerful. And then Billy Graham says, A suffering person, hey, they don't need no lecture. They need a listener. And uh, just something I wanted to, I want to share with you. I'm just going to read. This is a little bit different video. I'm going to read for you uh, from my, uh, the, the heading right there. I don't know if you can see that. The heading is called An Attitude That Truly Transforms Culture. And I share this story uh, about in December 1972, Edward Lorenz was speaking at the American Association for Advancement of Science. And he made this statement that just kind of baffled people. People kind of laughed at him, called him crazy. But And I, I'm sure many of you, uh, would, many people would make fun of him. Uh, I'm sure many made fun of him. But uh, basically he said, he made the statement, a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil can produce a tornado in Texas. The statement now is known as the butterfly effect. Maybe you've heard of that. But the butterfly effect essentially says that one seemingly insignificant act creates a ripple effect or chain reaction of events resulting in major impact. And we can see this in our lives and the lives of other people. And, and just for instance, almost all of us have been in the drive through to get food in the car in front of us. They've paid it for it and bought our food. And because they bought our food, we decided to pay for the person behind us. And it just kind of continues. This ripple continues to play along like, like the ripples in a water. Simply because one person made one decision to pay it forward. Many times a small, seemingly insignificant word of encouragement can bless someone on the inside to a greater degree than we will ever even know. Meanwhile, that sly, rude comment that was expressed as a joke can tear someone down further than you thought was possible. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Life or the lack of it truly does lie in the power of the tongue. And Proverbs 15 says, A glad heart makes a cheerful face, but an aching heart breaks the spirit. The heart of one who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouths of fools feed only on folly. All the days of the afflicted are wretched, but one who has a cheerful heart enjoys a continual feast. The, the underlying theme of that proverb right there isn't so much the circumstances and the conditions that we find ourselves in, but really the choice of attitude, which then determines the quality of our lives. We can't control the things people say about us or the things they do to us or, or anything like that. But one thing we have complete control over is our response and our reaction. Our attitude is our choice. And I've told this story many times in the leadership trainings I do that one day our oldest son, he came to me. He was so mad. He was mad, right? Like, you know how you get so mad sometimes that little little bottom lip just starts to quiver. And his lip was just a quiver. And I asked him, I said, Colton, what's up, man? Why, why are you so mad? And he said, oh, just Brady made me so mad. Brady made me so mad. And uh, Brady is his younger brother. And it come to find out that Brady had said something that made him mad. And <clears throat> 
I told him, I looked at him, I said, Colton, you know, if somebody else can make you mad, if somebody else can make you sad, or if somebody else can make you glad, then you've been had. If somebody else can make you sad, mad, or glad, you've been had because what you've done is you've given somebody else the power over your emotions. You've given somebody else the power to control and determine if your day is going to be a good day or a bad day. If, if my happiness is dependent upon somebody else, somebody else is in control of me, and you are far too powerful to be giving somebody else that kind of control over you. So what I share in the book is that, of course, there are people in this world that are acting according to the world. Of course, people are offended, may offend you with their words or actions, but we must remember that the battle we're really facing is not against flesh and blood, blood, but rather against rulers, authorities, powers, and principalities, powers of darkness, and spiritual forces of, of evil in the unseen realm. This also means that the weapons of our warfare are not of this world. I also kind of, I read a book and I was sharing about it in, in this book. It's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And it, it was really interesting. Uh, Viktor Frankl was a psychologist, um, but but he was actually, he went to Auschwitz uh, as a prisoner of war there. And he talks about his experience during the Holocaust and the concentration camp. He said that those taken to Auschwitz were immediately removed and separated from their family and the people they knew. Boom, right then. All their possessions were taken away from them, everything they had. They were stripped of their clothing, took away their dignity. They were given new clothes, which had a number on it, right? And they were no longer called by their name, but they were named by their number that was seated on their chest. And in one day, think about that, in one moment and in one day, their family was taken away, their possessions taken away, their dignity taken away, their identity taken away. And it was in spite of those horrible circumstances that Viktor Frankl made this incredible statement. This is powerful. He said, everything can be taken away from a man, but one thing, the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Wow. I mean, you think about that. Here's this man who had everything taken from him, who was witnessing daily people being burned in a furnace, who were experiencing hunger and thirst, yet he made the choice to focus on hope. And here, here's the powerful point I want us to understand is that where our focus goes, that's where our energy is going to flow. If you focus on finding faults, then you'll find them. If you focus on the Father's heart for an individual, then you'll hear it. If you focus on the dirt in the lives of others, then you'll easily find it. If you look for the gold, you'll find it as well. Let me tell you, it takes that much skill. It takes zero skill whatsoever to call out the dirt in the lives of other people. It's only by focusing on the heart of the Father that we find the grace to look past the dirt to see the diamonds. When we focus on the negative, we miss the positive. When we choose to focus on the opinions and gossip of this world, we miss the Holy Spirit and what He is saying in that moment. That is how He wants us to respond and react, how He wants us to say what, we, what He wants us to say. And I'm going to wrap, wrap this video up with, with just really quick. Uh, the heading I've got here is Transforming Babylon. The study on the, the life of Daniel is really incredible. Same kind of thing that happened to uh, Viktor Frankl where Daniel as a young man um, was led captive, led away from everything he had into Babylon. And actually, they even changed his name. Daniel's name originally meant God is my judge. And they changed his name in Babylon to Belshazzar which is a, um, a Babylonian god, which means Baal protects. This was all done with the intent to conform Daniel and the rest of the captives into the mold of the Babylonian world. The culture tried to change them from the outside in, but there was something greater on the inside that these antagonists could not touch. See, Scripture describes how Daniel determined, that is, he chose not to be influenced from the outside in by culture, but rather to influence culture from the inside out. There was something obviously different about Daniel, and I, I challenge you just to go read his story, and I, I tell a little bit about it in the book, how Daniel, it was amazing how he, he captured the heart of the Father, and he ended up influencing culture. He served for four kings during his time in Babylon, four different kings. Think about that. He served four different kings, and he had the ability to influence those kings. You can see it all through the book of of Daniel, how he chose to have the heart of the Father, not allow the culture to influence him, but he allowed the heart of the Father to influence him 
to make an impact in culture and society. So, hey, I wanted to just share this uh, video with you. Hope it added value to you. If you're interested in uh, reading further in the book, you can get that on my website. It's uh, CoreyLeeLeadership.com slash Heart of the Father, or it's on Amazon. You can check it out there, too. And uh, coming up, it'll be on Audible as well. But I hope this has added value to you. I hope you understand that you you, you are a person of value. And, 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 and the Father wants to do something incredible in, with, and through you. He wants to make an impact in the community, in the world that you've been called to. But we got to capture his heart on how to respond to a chaotic world around us. So, hey, I hope you have an awesome day. God bless.